This video was sponsored by Kelly Co. Metal detectors and gold mining equipment. Hello everyone, Dan Hurt, Dan Hurt Prospecting here. Welcome back to my channel. And if you're new, welcome. I hope to earn your subscription today. I am back here at the Similkameen River. You may have seen a video of mine a while back where I was testing out this claim and found a huge amount of gold in a whole lot of black sand. Today, I have the Gold Hog Multi Sluice. Batteries, all shovels, classifiers, all that kind of stuff. And we are planning to run a bunch of that sand, that black sand, and see if we can get a little bit of the shiny. Wish us luck, and I hope you enjoy. I've got the Gold Hog Multi Sluice set up here. I'm gonna be treating it as a high banker today. This tool is meant for cleaning up and reducing your cons, but it also has some great mats in it and the way it works, uh, it works okay for a recirculating small high banker. And because we have a very, very sandy material that we're going through, very sandy, like we're working sand, this machine is actually going to do a good job for me here. It's slow, but so am I these days, so. That'll be good. Dana and the kids are going to be digging material for me so that I don't have to move around and do too much physical labor here because my bad heart is keeping me slow. But I can feed the machine all day long. Let's hope for some really nice fine gold. This stuff is really fine. Now the way I have the system set up, I've got my tub of water for recirculating. I've got a bucket in there to catch the uh, tailings as they come off so I can constantly be dumping out the tailings. I have the full force of water going, about a seven to eight degree angle. It's just sitting on the rocks. Let's hope it stays on the rocks as we go. Let's start running. I forgot to bring my feeder scoop with me, so I'm going by hand right now. This is not ideal. Now, some people might say it's not smart for me to be running this stuff dry the way I am, and that's sort of right. It is uh, asking for a little bit of the gold, especially this fine stuff to float away. However, for ease sake, dry is a whole lot simpler for us today, which means we can get through a lot more material. If, you know, losing 10% of our gold to floating gold means we can go through 200% more material, in the end, we will get lots more gold. So that's why I'm not actually wetting the stuff down before I put it in. We may lose a little bit because of it, but I'll get more in the long run. And there is no lack of material here. It's not like we're gonna ever run out. Now I'm not affiliated with Gold Hog in any way, but I do really like this uh, Gold Hog Multi Sluice. It uh, does a nice job and it's simple. The Gold Cube probably does a better job running this kind of stuff, but it's a little awkward. It's big, you have to set it up, it takes more time to set up, more time to clean up. This can be set up in seconds, okay, minutes, and uh, does a fairly good job of running this kind of sandy material that has fine gold in it. And the tests I did on the Fraser said that it had pretty darn good capture rates. So I'm happy with it. Gold Hog does make nice products. I do like almost everything they make. Maybe not their um, flow pan. That's not my favorite. So I just shut it down for a second. Well, we get a bit more material dug. We can definitely run faster than we can dig here because the ground is a bit hard. And I thought, while I shut it down, I'm going to just quickly do a clean out. I've run half a bucket of material, so not much material at all, but I want to make sure that we're actually getting something in here. So I'm going to do a quick clean out and just make sure that there's gold. This is the cons I get out of the multi sluice when I'm done, so not very much, maybe a couple of material, maybe two. And this is only about a 10 minute run, so let's see if we're getting a little bit of gold for 10 minutes. Okay, there's some there, but not nearly as much as I was seeing before, so we may have to rethink where we're digging. I might even do a few test pans around to find the good stuff before we waste too much time digging the bad dirt. 
So after a few test pans, I did find a place that was a little bit better, showed, you know, 100 specs in a pan. So uh, Dana's gonna go dig there for a little bit and see if we can do a bit better this next run. Unfortunately, the place I found last season that actually had really nice gold in it, doesn't seem to be there this season. The high water seems to have removed it completely. I can't even find the spot, but uh, there are other places around that look really good. So we'll find the gold. Unfortunately, two of my slaves, I mean, uh, workers, have found uh, more important tasks to do. <laughs> they're having fun. I'm glad they're having fun. Looks like it's just Dana and I working today. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure, but I think that might be poison ivy. I'm sure one of you guys will tell me for sure. It seems to be everywhere in this one section. Hey boys, why don't you roll around in the greenery and tell me how it feels? We are very lucky on this very hot July day, beautiful sunny day, but hot. We found a nice spot in the shade that we can work. Digging is out here in the sun, but running the high bankers in the shade. This is the Smilkameen River, as I said before. Really well known for its fine gold in the lower Smilkameen, coarser gold, bigger gold up in the upper Smilkameen. But once in a while you do find a big chunk down here. Big chunk being like a flake or something that's maybe an eighth inch across. Most of the stuff here is like microscopic small. That's where I was digging, right there. Woohoo! I think we're gonna take a quick water break after this uh, bucket. Gunging up in there? Yeah, we seem to be getting much less water than uh, we should have. So uh, I should uh, maybe clean some things out once this bucket's done. Um, we have less water going through right now than we're supposed to. So I have a feeling that I sucked up some gunge and that it stuck up in the header box and uh, you, you can see it's uh, overflow right here in the center. And that's because our water level's way down at the moment for some reason. I'll have a look at it and find out. Well, we've run another two buckets with material through now. And this stuff should have been better quality. Let's hope. Let's see what it has in it. It's starting to get really hot out here. I may have to go for a dip soon. Supposed to get up to, I think they said 38 Celsius. That's like a, a million and a half Fahrenheit or something like that. A lot of black in this. Thousands of pieces of gold doesn't add up to anything that's so small, but a lot of gold. So this is what I'm left with after panning it down. Just like a cup full of black sand. It's crazy. But there's gold throughout the black sand. Pieces everywhere, millions of pieces up there. Let's go in and see what that looks like close up. So there we are so far, a few billion little flakes, couple bigger ones, and it's still all through the black sand all around. But again, that doesn't add up to very much because they're so small.
So good news, I checked the tailings. There wasn't even one speck in the tailings, so the machine is doing its job nicely. Bad news is we don't have quite as much gold as we thought from our tests last year. So Dana's trying a new spot. I'm gonna go try a new spot, and we're gonna see if this next run has a little more. And we also figure out why we didn't have enough water. There was a root wrapped up in the pump, in the impeller. So hopefully we have better water this run. So on this very, very hot day, we gotta cool off. Upstream, quicker, quicker, swim hard. It doesn't matter how I swim, it, I'm not getting anywhere. I'm just trying to swim in one place now. Is the water warm, Ev? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, it's not. <laughs> So this is just the sand behind these rocks here. The sand itself is black, absolutely black. That's how much magnetite is in this sand. It is insane. I'm gonna just scoop a little bit right off the surface here and see if actually that black sand has any gold in it. So there's a little bit of microscopically fine gold in here, but not much. So I should have come scouted first before we just jumped into the high banker. This pan here has about 10 times more gold than any of the ones over where we were working. There's gold everywhere. I'm not sure if the camera's picking it up in this bright, bright sunlight though. So it looks like my mistake today was not coming ahead of time to do some prospecting, some scouting, and find out where we should have dug. Because uh, I couldn't find the spot I was last year. I think we were kind of in the wrong spot and the gold wasn't nearly as good. We still got a lot of gold for our two hours of running. Uh, but it wasn't what I was expecting. This one pan I just did upstream here uh, had like 10 times more gold than any pan I had down there. So before I come back here with a high banker, I'm gonna spend a whole day with a pan and a shovel prospecting to find out where I should dig and bark it a little bit more accurately. Let's go back and see what I got. So here's the gold from the trip. Now, of course, next time we're gonna get more than that. I was hoping for a gram today. That's about 0.1 of a gram. So we're gonna hope for more on the next trip now that I know where I was supposed to be digging. So we didn't hit it as big with gold as we had hoped for today, but we sure had a great day out here in the sunshine with our feet in the water, enjoying the Smilkmean River. And we did find some pretty nice gold. It just wasn't the gram we were hoping for today. I found where I was supposed to be working up river. So next time I'll do a bit more scouting properly and, you know, work the right spot. I hope you enjoyed coming along on our adventure with us today. Big, big thanks to everyone out there, all my fans, everyone that watches for your support, especially my patrons. And don't forget to check out my sponsor below, Kellyco. Until the next adventure, everyone. Bye.